Sinde mame na mifrigana. Me ba America happy time a midi dunu. Sesi a midi dunkong. For the English speakers. Hello. My name is Mame, and I moved my entire life from Ghana to the United States of America when I was 15 years old. Today, I am 19, and much to my chagrin, I am still moving to America. I know nothing of the Beatles, and I don't really care for a lesson. U.S. history is a blur, and I still say hippopotamus because my tongue is permanently twisted to roll out a Ghanaian accent, regardless of how many years I spend away from my motherland. For millions of immigrants and myself, arriving in America and becoming American are worlds apart. But my story isn't so much of my arrival in the United States, but more of my becoming. To become. Be, become, was, been, being. The ambiguity in the verb tense clearly described my ambivalence of my identity in this new land. America was a new world to me, and in a new world, I figured should come a new identity. I was wrong. Embracing the identity, not even a green card or a US passport would ever erase was the first step I should have taken on my journey to becoming the United States. But I didn't figure that out until much later. I remember returning home from my first day of high school in America, inconsolably upset with myself for thinking America would be better for me. I was upset that I hadn't realized that the white teenage girls in my white suburban high school who I had idolized so much as a child were actually bland, flavorless people who wore leggings and Uggs all day and said like over 12 times in a sentence. <laughs> I had counted. See, I tried to be bland and flavorless too because I wanted to be American, but bland just wasn't for me. See, as a little girl growing up, I had all of these dolls, and they were the most beautiful things I had ever seen. I was conditioned to associate the US with whiteness. See, there was whiteness, and then there was otherness. At the time, whiteness had overtaken the world, and my world at the time revolved around the television sets. There really was whiteness, and then there was otherness. I did not desire to be an other, and so I spent my entire life in Ghana attempting to be a part of this whiteness. Ghana is less than 2% white, so you can imagine the stress I put myself through. As a little girl growing up, my most prized possessions were my dollies. They were all white, and they were the most beautiful beings I had ever seen. I would dream of having hair as long and luscious as theirs and finding a white boy as strong as my Ken doll to whisk me away to the land of white people, away from my rubbish-infested neighborhood. I wanted to be a lighter shade of brown. Hell. I wanted to be no shade of brown. I craved the idea of white America, oblivious to the fact that white America didn't crave me at all. I'm a Ghanaian girl born and bred, but I rejected my Ghanaianness for so long I began to believe that I was of America. And so I set out to be a part of whichever America I could squeeze into no matter what. Immigrants such as myself have been charged with the responsibility of fitting into one of the racial groups in the not so melting pot of America, and to refuse to be a part of that meal is to banish ourselves into seclusion. I didn't travel 3,000 miles across the ocean to my dreamland to be secluded, so believe me when I say I was more than determined to fit into any racial group that would accept me. And so I joined Black America, or at least I tried to. I found myself yelling at the top of my lungs, tears streamed down my face as I compared my African brother to Michael Brown, much to the irritation of my parents. I was becoming an American, and there was nothing anyone could do about it. I thought I was making great strides trying to figure out this America when the Rachel Dolezal case of a white woman posing as a black woman exploded on the black scene. Her situation made me question whether or not I, too, was appropriate in a culture that I didn't really belong in. After all, Black America had chewed Rachel up for her posing and spat her right back out. Would I be next? I questioned the level of my blackness in relation to the blackness which surrounded me, and thus came my uncertainty of my place in black America. See, I failed to realize that although I was black in America, I was still an, Im an immigrant. I did live in America, but I was not of America. My ancestors didn't build America. They built Ghana. See, I was not a child of America, therefore I was not African-American. 
I was only a distant sister of the people. I am disconnected from whiteness because of my blackness. But at the same time, my blackness weighs differently in my mind than it does in the minds of African Americans. I walked on eggshells because I feared that I would be found out to be a fraud because I owned doubt and uncertainty about who I was and where I belonged, just as I owned my blackness. As an immigrant, I yearned to be a part of this new world, but I knew deep down that I would spend my lifetime becoming and never quite become should I keep up with the act. So, I traveled back in time to my days of white dolls and rubbish infested neighborhoods. I told little me to love every ounce of Ghana she could because there would come a time when burgers and fries were all she could eat for a week straight. I told little me to love her wool-like hair and dark brown skin because there will come a time when the snow and the cold will turn it all to ash. I came to embrace my Ghanianness. W.E.B. Du Bois voice in the, in the soul of black folks, you know, the challenges of Tunis. He attested that living in America and being black called for him to act differently from one context to the other. Quite frankly, I attest that immigrants actually face the, the challenges of Tunis, threeness, and perhaps even fourness. Immigrants do not get to pick and choose which side of America we will dwell in because we are always reminded of that otherness. In America, we are the other. To my fellow immigrants, embracing this identity that not even a green card or a US passport would ever erase is a step in becoming. We must use our identity as a unifying tool to counter the divisions created in the US by the population and politicians as a whole. We may or may not be melting pots, but we are what Americans hope America to be one day. Ever since I found the power that I wielded from being a Ghanaian-born American citizen, I have never let it go. I laugh with white classmates. I dance with Indian colleagues, and I eat, to it. I eat with Korean teachers. I come to realize that the white teenage girls at my white suburban high school probably wore Uggs because it was cold in the winter, and maybe use like because it's a space filler. There's power in an identity that transcends these divisions created in the US, and believing in that power is a step in becoming. After all, Shakespeare said it best when he said, We know what we are, but not what we may be. Thank you.